One of the things that makes the God discussion between us and religious people so difficult is that people are rarely just saying the thing that convinced them. I mean, I, I suppose if you're an atheist that was once devoutly religious and came to atheism only after a long personal struggle, you probably just list good arguments for atheism in reverse order of how influential they were to you personally. But like the, the thing that convinced me that God doesn't exist was, I mean, come on. And I, I, I know going in that that's not going to be sufficient if I'm trying to convince people I'm right. So instead, I pluck from the multitude of arguments that, though sound in my estimation, have pretty much nothing to do with why I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God because that shit is just silly, and I use logical arguments to justify that belief, but none of them are how I got there. The same is true to a far greater degree from people going the other way, though, right? So whether religious people are coming to you with the Kalam cosmological argument or why are there still monkeys, they're not talking about the way they got there. And if you think about it, we both have the same reason. If I just talk about the reasons I actually don't believe in God, I'll embarrass them. And if they just talk about the reasons they actually do believe in God, so will they. I mean, so like, imagine that they all got the pen is blue curse from liar liar. The most common reason for being religious would be I was indoctrinated into it before I was old enough to doubt. After that would probably be something like I'm terrified of my own mortality and this allows me to banish those fears when they bubble up into my consciousness. After that would probably be I want to feel more special than logic would justify. Obviously they can't deploy any of those arguments. They can't even admit to any of those. So instead they make up shit that sounds convincing from a religious vantage point. Of course, we then feel obligated to answer the argument that they're making, even if the whole exercise is a bit of red herring. I mean, if the you know lunatic liar or Lord argument has nothing to do with why they believe in Christianity, demolishing it isn't going to nudge their beliefs very much, if at all. At best, we're just going to stop them from using that stupid argument. And even though we know that's what we're going to be doing going in, their arguments are so bad and so easy to counter that you almost can't help but allow yourself to be roped in by that distraction. But the key to avoiding that distraction is remembering that this is not a phenomenon that's limited to religious discussion. In fact, I come across it pretty much every time I see anyone defending traditionalism. I mean, in a lot of ways, that's the main thing that we're up against in the atheist movement, right? We're, we're a majority Christian nation because historical momentum. Religion gets exemptions to laws because they've always had them. That cross is allowed in that public park because it's been there for a really long time. And when they're called upon to justify it, they have to make up arguments that sound convincing from a religious vantage point because even they know because it's always been that way is a shit argument. Now, you can, of course, call them out for defense of traditionalism and try to shift the debate to those grounds. But what you'll more likely find yourself doing at that point is arguing about whether their argument boils down to traditionalism. Another option that I find pretty effective, though, is to shortcut around that discussion and ask them to imagine a world where the thing they're defending doesn't exist and they're trying to justify the idea to the world for the first time. So the, the, the point here isn't necessarily to get that justification, but more to force them to recognize how shitty most of their arguments are before they even make them. So I, at the risk of going too many layers deep here, let me give you an example. I'm not a baseball fan. I don't really follow the game at all, but I'm absolutely fascinated by the arguments surrounding robot umpires. So for those even less familiar than me, we have the technology now to tell exactly precisely whether a pitch was inside the strike zone or not. Right? We can use lasers and shit and measure it to the nearest fucking femtometer, probably, if we really wanted to. And yet, Major League Baseball, an organization that generates over three and a half billion dollars a year in revenue, chooses instead to continue the tradition of having some dude standing by in the plate going, eh, it didn't. It looks like it uh, got in. Now, keep in mind, they, we're already using the technology. This isn't theoretical at all. The TV networks televising the game use it. So every time the imperfect umpire gets it wrong, we have definitive proof of it staring us right in the fucking face. And yet still, an overwhelming number of fans resist the change to virtually perfect technology over just some guy. And the arguments they make are hilariously silly because they can't bring themselves to admit that the only real reason is resistance to change. Every single one of these arguments falls apart as soon as you imagine a world where, you know, the game always had laser guided precision. And now you're trying to introduce the idea of a fallible dude taking care of it instead. And yet people will make those arguments as though that doesn't negate the possibility of them being right. Of course, I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of listeners now already taking up keyboards to tell me how wrong I am because... 
people defending traditionalism are generally lying first and foremost to themselves. So if you can't handle that example, just imagine somebody waxing nostalgic about how much better going to the video store was or how something or another sounds better on vinyl and apply the same arguments to them. The point is that tradition often acts as an invisible trust to an awful lot of arguments, especially arguments about religion and culture. Its invisibility, in fact, is what makes tradition so damn powerful. And often the only way to show people how reliant their bad arguments are on the happenstance of habit is to take that foundation away and watch them fall.